some ominous clouds rolling in over ANZ Stadium. We've got this match and, of course, Stay tonight, outside. the grand final qualifier. What a game it is in prospect. The Panthers and the Rabbitohs, you'll see it all here on nine. But the NRLW clash, a preview of the grand final. It's not often you can say that. He's underway. Shannon Marto, 16, starting up front for the Broncos. And strong defence already. Grace Hamilton, the 21 for the Roosters. She was supposed to be rested this week, but has had to come into the Roosters team with a couple of players unable to make it here through injury. Here's Millie Boyle. What a star she is. And she gallops up over the halfway. Plays it to Brown, who's doing the dummy half work. And another run for Shannon Mater. That's three in the opening set of the game. She's trying to make a statement. Okay, we're all good. Ray McGregor with a kick over the top. And Shanice Parker looks like she's playing at fullback at the moment. Tahara Tamara was supposed to go there, but a change in positions. Here's Talina Simon. Well, I think it's a good option moving uh, Shanice Parker to that fullback role and pushing Zahara back into the halves because she's, Zahara's played both games already, so heavy legs, and then putting in, her into a position where she needs to be hitting top speed consistently and getting through a lot of work. I think it's much smarter to uh, keep her in that halves and use Shanice Parker's speed out the back. Here's Hamilton. There's a, a rugby union flavour through this Roosters outfit too. Is there a one? Grace Hamilton and... Kennedy Cherrington, both with strong rugby pedigree as Tamara sends it high. A ball taken well. That's a Shazolta over on that wing. Alana Ferguson's on the sideline for this game. Hope it doesn't rain, Alana. It's looking a bit darker than it was before. It is looking a little bit <laughs> ominous, but I think probably easier conditions for the women playing. It was very hot in that earlier game today. Still quite warm, but we've got a little bit of a breeze. It's meant to be going across the field, but it tends to swirl a little bit here in inside ANZ Stadium. So we could see that have a little bit of an impact on the kicking game in today's match. I actually just spoke to Jamie Feeney before he headed up to the box. That's the Roosters coach. And he was just saying how relaxed and how excited he is for today's game. So that's really exciting, knowing that they're feeling really confident and ready to just play some great footy. All right, thanks, Alana. There's Brigginshaw with a kick that goes uh, away from the fullback. Landed in no man's land, if you like. That's Bridie Parker in three, bringing it back. Sarah Togatuki now. Tackled by Boyle. You, you mentioned the middle forwards of Bruce and Ruan. You can see here in defence, they're rushing up and, and really cutting off the Roosters before they can they make any notable ground. Yeah, and also in attack, they're just making some easy moves. As Nita Maynard does the same thing, jumping out of that dummy half. But every set they've had so far, they've made at least 60 metres, which will be heartening for Kelvin Wright. Zahara Tamara's kick over towards the wing. And good kick chase there by Hamilton. She rushed through. Made a strong tackle. I love the way she tackles, Tomo, because she gets that leg drive going, very rugby union style, mm. and just drives the attack back at least 10 metres every time. Played by Julia Robinson, then McGregor. And Tyler Birch in 18, who was called into this team before kickoff, playing in the centres. Played it quickly to Brown. And a strong charge again. This is a great start. Shannon Marto. Strong and athletic. Brigginshaw. Kicks out towards Parker's wing. She takes it well. That's Bridie Parker. Tamara, the dummy half. And more strong defence. Brigginshaw up there. Along with Lauren Brown, the nine for the Broncos. So the Roosters really finding it hard to make ground at the moment. Here's Hanisi, and you can see more driving defence. A Boyle and Elliston with a good tackle. Here's Zahara Tamara. And they've got some space out here, although the pass doesn't find its mark. It comes back to Shanice Parker. 
Which is put down seven metres short of the halfway. As you can see, the Roosters, they've barely got anywhere on this set. Zahara Tamara's kick. That goes to uh, Brisbane's 30 metre line and Meg Ward. Played many games with the Jillaroos. Now Upton. Played in the grand final for the Broncos last year. At fullback to Chelsea Baker's place in the team. Now Boyle lands on a front and can play it quickly as a result of that. Brown for Brigham Shaw. Ball turned on the inside to Marto, who gets crunched in a really good tackle. Well, they had to make that tackle because it was starting to look really ominous through that middle third as Brigginshaw dinks a little kick over it. If it holds up, it's perfect. It's yeah, he's all it had does. to play at it. And does well to get back in the field of play too, Shanice Parker. Well, Ma Tomo, we briefly touched on Lauren Brown. She's moved into that hooking role today. We've seen her be a winger for the first couple of games. And she has not missed a beat. I'm really excited to see her get their hands on the ball when they're in good attacking field position. It's a rarity, isn't it? Someone playing on the wing one week and a dummy half the next. The tackle count will be up, that's for sure. And the Roosters shifting here, trying to find some territory out wide. Gee, they're such a professional team, this Broncos outfit. That kick by Brigginshaw in the defence. It's been good, but Maynard split them here with speed up the centre. The Kiwi Ferns hooker. That's a really good run. Ali Brickenshaw was left grasping at air there. And here's uh, Howard with a kick. It bounces between Upton and uh, Meg Ward, the five. Upton's got it now. And she'll return the kick. Does well in the end, 15 short of halfway. And Robinson. And Aiken now. They say she's the understudy to Ali Brigginshaw, learning the, the ropes coming through, the playmaking, the tricks of the trade. And no better teacher in the women's game than Ali Brigginshaw, although they didn't pay much respect for her there. That was a driving tackle and a good one. McGregor with the ball for Harden. Another quick play of the ball. And McGregor now with the kick. Looking to fly the fullback. Well done, Shanice Parker. Yeah, but the kick chase is good. Well, and also, you could just hear the referee calling Lauren Brown out of that one, calling her offside. She did well, pulled out of it, so she didn't give a penalty away to the Roosters to try and help them piggyback out of this yardage set as the Broncos, again, come up with some huge defence through the middle, really pinning the Roosters down within their own 20. It's ferocious stuff at the moment. The Roosters spreading. They're just so well organised, this Broncos team. A reminder to Telstra is the a proud naming rights partner of the NRL Telstra Women's Premiership. There was a match earlier today, if you're joining us later. And the Warriors 22 over the Dragons 10. They played some fantastic rugby league, the Warriors, and they get a victory to conclude their season. Good work to do for the Dragons, winless throughout their 2020 campaign. Tomorrow with a kick from inside the 40. And down for Upton. That's Talina Simon just finishing off that tackle there, Tomo. She's just come back. This is her first year back after having a baby. And it's so wonderful to see her looking in such good condition. I remember the Origin game. Was it last year? Or she had an absolute blinder for New South Wales. And in 2018, she scored four tries in one of the Roosters games. Yeah. Just incredible talent. Good beauty on the wing. McGregor. Oh, good footwork. Dodged a couple of the bigger forwards and is put down in the centre of the 30 metre line. Ball played to Brown and Brigham Shaw. That might have been a forward pass if the first one wasn't. The second one certainly was. And the referee has called it up. All right. Might go sideline. Alana. I think the, the Broncos are putting on some really brilliant pressure here, but sometimes can be the case that that lack of communication seems to affect their attack. We know that they've got four, uh, three sorry, ball players out there in Ali Brigginshaw. She was involved just then, Taryn Aiken, 
and then on the edge, Racine McGregor. So I think just they need to figure out their place. They played brilliantly there last week, but that was obviously a breakdown in communication, and they just need to sort of figure that out, and then the attack will flow. I like to pull a pass. Oh, that's a bad mistake. Melanie Howard with a blatant forward pass right, to Corbin up. McGregor. Well, Shot now, on. this is where the Broncos will absolutely punish you. They are so good at attacking, and it was, yeah, very much a forward pass there. Early call from the referee, and now the Roosters are really going to have to staunch up their defence. They're going to have to really work hard for each other here. Don't let the heads drop. But the Broncos, we saw, even though that last play that they had down this end was a forward pass and a bit of a knock-on on that left edge, they were really searching and finding some little holes to push through. Aiken goes to Upton. Hall was there, but she takes the tackle. We might be on the verge of the first points of this game. He's Harden with a strong run. Good tackle, though. And Nisi front on. Centre field. Mato has had a, a barnstorming start in the front row. Seven metres short. Here's Brigham Short playing out the back. And Aiken with some great footwork. Aiken! Oh, yes, that's a try. Yeah. They didn't hold Sunny. her in the tackle. So the bunker's going to have okay. a look, but this looks fine. Tackle four. I'm inclined to agree with no you. No try. Confirm an instruction, please. Oh, okay, here we go. Well, we could be both be wrong. I thought that uh, she had just fought her way off the Roosters' defenders and found the try line, but the referee has seen something different. He's seen an obstruction earlier in the play. Is he looking at this lead runner taking out Zahara Tamara? No. She checks and releases, clear. That's a step. So I guess he's looking to see if number 12, Jessica Elliston, gets in the way and doesn't allow the Roosters an opportunity to attack the ball. Jessica Ellison runs through the line and does not cause any obstruction to the defenders. We're just looking for grounding. And the ball is grounded in the end goal. We have a decision. It'll be a try. It looked like a try at real speed. That's good footwork, isn't it, from, from Taryn Aiken. Great evasive skill. Oh, it really is. And she has been so good for the Broncos this year. Again, playing either in that lock or that number seven role. As we watch here on the Harvey Norman replay, look at her deft little footwork. She's working within a three-metre corridor there and just gets the strength, gets down low and is able to push off, as I said, those Roosters defenders and find a try line. Some great work out of dummy half as well. And it was good to see that the referees and the uh, bunker came to the right decision. There was no no obstruction there whatsoever and the four-pointer was awarded. Yeah, she's got some skill, hasn't she? Alana, that was a great, great piece of work. Excellent. I just love the shape that the Broncos are playing with. Ali Brigginshaw feeds it to Taryn Aiken. She had Tamika Upton up, sweeping around the back as an option and that's what made uh, Taryn Aiken going to the line possible. What Tamika Upton did was she relieved a little bit of that pressure in the defensive line. And the shapes that they're running are just really brilliant. They just ask so many questions because they have so many players in motion. Meg Ward, perfect with the boot last week. A challenging one to start her afternoon. Ah, but she's a good goal kicker at 6-0 Brisbane. <laughs> Broncos away to a good start here. Six points to nil against the Roosters at ANZ Stadium. They'll meet again in the grand final next week. So it's a 
How would you describe it? Are they trying to soften each other up? Are they trying to strike a psychological blow? It's funny funny how to approach this, isn't it? I think they're trying to feel each other out just to see what they'll throw at them and also blooding some new players, giving them a little bit of game-hardened experience leading into the grand final and just seeing where the teams will lie at the end of the day. I mean, you need to test who's got what it takes when it comes to crunch time because it's the biggest day in the calendar for uh, rugby league enthusiasts and you want your best team out there on the pitch. Uh, Brigham Shaw, with all her guile, she's been good again so far, and that's Millie Boyle tackled. Brown, Brigham Shaw, she goes skyward. It's floating up there. They've lost it here, the Roosters. And it is a knock on. So Brisbane will get the ball back here from a Roosters mistake. Knock on over on the 20. Well, Shanice Parker, just she had to play at that one, and the Broncos players were breathing down her neck. It was a wonderful kick by Brickenshaw and it was a really good setup. Again, the Broncos, after points, have gone 65 metres on the next set of six and now have the ball in a left scrum position on their own 20 metre line. This, this is very dangerous for the Roosters because they need to hold them out here and they need to get down the other end and build their own pressure. There's Aiken and Upton from fullback. Oh, that's too easy for the Broncos. An open line for Meg Ward. She strolls over. Well, congratulations, Meg Ward. She's done a lot of the kicking and she's been involved in a lot of yardage work so far this year. And finally, she gets a four-pointer. And as we look at this... Give the Broncos a sniff and they're going to run away with it. Back to back tries for the uh, the champs of the NRLW. And Meg Ward has one from the touchline to convert her own try. There's a bit to talk about here for the Roosters behind the goal line. They're trying to find their way back into this. Ward, what a kick. She's a super boot. Idea. We've got time to hire. Twelve nil the Broncos really doing it nicely as Quincy Dodd comes into the game for the Roosters. Well the key here, Tomo, for the Roosters. They need to contain the Broncos. They can't allow them to get 40, 50, 60 metres of every set of six. They really need to get the defensive line up, get their speed up, and get in the faces of these Broncos. Crossfield run that time by Tyler Birch, and the Roosters feast on that. Strong contact on Elliston this time too. That's just what you said, Ruan. They've got to rush off the line and try to pressure the Broncos into some sort of mistake. Millie Boyle confronted strongly by Murphy, who's out there too for the Roosters. Four tackles gone here. This is a bit of defensive set. Uh, Brigham Short went to McGregor, and there's Harden. And powers away up to the halfway. Brigham Short down the short side. Sends a kick up, and Shanice Parker playing at fullback. 
tackled strongly there by Elliston. Well, that was a much better defensive set from the Roosters, but again, the Broncos, look at this line speed from them, especially on that kick chase. They were right up in the face of Shanice Parker, pressuring her, taking her to ground early. Sherrington, tackled by McGregor. And a good run now, that's Togatuki. The ball came out, but backwards. And now Meeks. Tackled in centre field. Howard sends a kick over the top for Simon to chase. The bounce favours the Roosters. Upton goes to ground quickly after taking the ball. Hasn't she blossomed into a wonderful fullback? We saw her a little bit last year, but this year her game has gone to another level. Now Robinson across the park again. This is this is better in ten in the Roosters' defence. Tonight, a reminder, the minor premiers, the Panthers, up against Wayne Bennett's Bunnies as they're fighting for the right to play Melbourne in the grand final next week. Oh, that's, uh, well, I'm assuming they're from the same family, given they're sitting next to each other. I think that's a safe assumption, given the COVID situation. Maybe a Panther just, and a Bunny together. They might just be enemies for the night. Yeah. Friendly rivalry. Well, Brisbane have gone nowhere on this set, and Brigginshaw. Oh, what a good kick. Cleared the fullback and the ball keeps running all the way down to the Roosters. Ten. Where Parker. Shanice links up with Bridie Parker. And Meeks, strong defence there by Boyle and Lenarducci is part of that tackle as well. Penalty. This will help the Roosters. A relieving penalty. They were getting hammered in defence by the Broncos. Chelsea Lenarduzzi is uh, fresh on the field for the Broncos. Now Zahara will find fine touch, get themselves into good ball nice and early and start building some of their own pressure to try and wrest back some of this control from the Broncos because the first 20 minutes, it has just been a maroon whitewash, if that is a term. A maroon wash? Maroon wash, yeah. Bronco wash. Good run, Amelia Murphy. And near the Broncos' 40-metre line now. Howard, flat pass. That's Jocelyn Kelleher, who's gone onto the field in 17. Too well to catch that. She was at full tilt. And a chance for Dodd now, who scurries from dummy half. They're inside the 20. They've steadied here, the Roosters, in the last little while. That's a good tackle, Robinson. She saw the ball coming and sussed it out. They try and go through the hands here. That touch a Bronco? I thought it did, but the referee has no. called last tackle here. So the Roosters lose a few metres and now have to come up with a really good attacking kick and a good kick chase. Tamara bangs it up across the field. The outside players chasing and they've done well. Meg Ward is trapped inside her own 10. Now Upton, plenty of speed off the mark. I learnt that um, during the week, Tamika Upton sharing a house with three of her teammates, two to one. We'll uh, get back to that in a moment. I hope they put their smelly boots outside. <laughs> the Roosters, can they capitalise on that mistake? Through the centre, Quincy Dodd, oh, they barely lay a hand oh. on it. Can she get it down? I can don't think she, she did. Get it down? Tell me she did. <laughs> no. Took oh, a one. How oh. did she not? Out there. Well, this is what Quincy, Quincy Dodd team. brings. When she comes on the field, she brings this energy. She scored two tries in the same vein. She's had wonderful ruck recognition. She started off in the halves and out in the centre wing. And moving into this hooking role, I think, is perfect for her. Togga Tuki. Good ball from dummy half by Dodd. There's an open wing. Simon is in. Matt, sorry for slapping you, but I am so happy for Talina Simon. She scored four tries in 2018 for the Roosters. She's come back from...
game and it's just good to see the Roosters get that try because they were really ambushed early but they've settled their way into the match and and they've got one on the board themselves. And also good to see Talina Simon is the third player this year to notch up five tries in the NRLW competition. Julia Robinson was the first and Jess Sergis as well so she joins a very strong top trio of football players. Sahara Tamara, tough one. Right against the sideline. You see the quality in these two outfits, can't you? The Broncos, as you'd expect from a team that's um, a dual-running premier. With the Roosters, they're, they're putting together a, a nice lineup, and with a couple of uh, key players to come back in next week for the grand final. Highly competitive, it suggests. Tahara Tamara, it's online. It's just not quite there. Stay on side. Stay on side here. Find the kicker, Karen. And Charlotte Kaslick amongst some of her teammates in the stands, unable to play this afternoon because of that terrible injury. We hope to see her back in NRLW at some stage in the future. 12-4. Broncos over the Roosters. Six and a half until the break. Raw lost ball here in a really heavy tackle. That was great defence. That's Shantae Tamara, the 17, right. who's Shot out there playing on. against Strong's the sister. Here. Yes, isn't this wonderful to see? She's a good little player, the little sister of Zahara Tamara. So I wonder if we'll see similar scenes to what we saw with the Morris boys when they played each other. Had a pretend little fisticuffs. That'd be an interesting little thing to, to witness. But she's a good player. Good low centre of gravity. Gets up and under that ball on a much bigger body in Amelia Murphy comes up with an excellent tackle and now again the Roosters invite the Broncos into some really good ball position with an easy error. Aiken, she's been good and she had delivered the pass that time. Tyler Birch, 25 out yeah. from the Roosters line. They'll come down the right to Upton. She's been a standout again today. Play to Tamara. And Chelsea Lenarduzzi. Quincy Dodd up against the bigger front rower. Made a good tackle there. Tamara to Brigham Short. And Aiken tried to bat it on quickly, but the defence was good there. There's Upton, who's gone from one side of the park straight back to the other. She's everywhere. Aiken, Brigham Short. Lenarduzzi. And now Tamara. Roosters defence pretty organised just here. But eventually found Brigham Shaw who stabs a kick up and uh, an attempted tap out to the wing has yeah, gone forward. Over. You got a drink? Well, this has been an entertaining half of football so far. We've only seen one penalty blown the entire game so far, and we've only seen four errors. So the ball has been in play for an extended period of time. So there's a little bit of fatigue starting to sit in with these last five minutes. And this is where the likes of Shante Tamara and Quincy oh, Dodd. Oh, there's a juggle. Oh, she <laughs> held on to it. Phillips just held on to that before it hit the ground. All right, might go sideline. Alana, what are you seeing? Well, just touching on what Rue was speaking, it's a pretty fast game of football from down here, but I think a couple of little errors have started to creep in from that fatigue, but I think the most ex exciting aspect of the fatigue are those spaces that are starting to creep up. A couple on the edges and then also in and behind the ruck. It only takes one clever player to identify that space and attack it, and we get some pretty exciting footy. You know, the Roosters with another mistake here. Half-time looming, and Brisbane gifted possession. Here's Annette Brander. On the 20. Brigham Shaw with a lovely pass to a charging Elliston who can't get there. Gee, that's a good tackle around the legs. Foliaki. Oh, and a mistake as well. 
big play, Vanessa Foliaki. Huge play. Huge right, play. Little shot if she on. doesn't come up with that tackle and Shanice Parker trying to finish her off over the top, Elliston with that leg drive would definitely have found her way to the try line. So that is a huge play with only three minutes to go before half time. Let's go, heads in. Let's go, Talisha, heads in. Shot clock off. See if the Roosters can get to a kick here. Oh, ordering ball off the scrum. Corbin McGregor did well to catch that. She was coming back on the unders and it almost snuck away from her, but the Roosters just need to keep the ball in hand, work through their set, and get a really good kick off the back of it. They won't. They won't get another set of six, but they defensively can try and put some pressure on the Broncos. There's Caitlin Phillips. Looks a real athlete. She's pulled down 10 short of the halfway line. Quincy Dodd, lovely pass from dummy half, isn't she? And cut out ball there to McGregor, who keeps it alive, and Phillips backing up. Got the ball for Simon, who's driven into the ground. Tackle had the potential to get ugly there. Fortunately, Meg Ward pulled out. Oh, there's a big shot in the middle of the ground. Branda, who's run strongly and backs it up with a big tackle. That was a knock on in the play. The ball, referee missed it. Tamara, and through the hands, goes to Parker, and she's wrapped up out there. And now Robinson is a strange end to a set of six. Well, I think they probably would have preferred to have a contestable kick off the back of that run and force the Broncos on, no, down Julia, to try and bring it, it out off their own try line or, or trap them in goal even. So now, though, they get the ball back. They're already on their own 30, working towards the 40. And some good, strong defence, though, through the middle for the Roosters, which is good signs. Good offload. Lenarduzzi, way to bring in Shaw. Fires the pass to Elliston. Final minute of this first half. There's another mistake. It's a bit sloppy in the last few the moments 20. of the game. All right, shot clock on. Roosters just Well, the Roosters just want to try and set this scrum a lot quicker than they are at the moment. They need to stop the clock. It was definitely just a, a cold loss there for Jessica Ellison. That's two in a row for her. Game She'll clock be disappointed off. with that. Shot clock still going. Got to stay in your position. Stay in that position. All right, let's start forming Brisbane. Heads in, we're going now. Let's go. Talisha, heads in. All right. All right, 40 seconds. Let's see if the Roosters put some points on. Howard with a kick for Simon. She caught the winger napping. Upton goes back, and lucky she did because Simon left Meg Ward glued to the ground there. Well, I think the Roosters have been watching the 2018 playbook. That's how Talina Simon scored one of her four tries in that game. And Broncos, however, have counter-attacked beautifully. Tamika Upton, well up, well up to the task, shutting it down. Leave it now, Melanie. Square fight. Here's McGregor, and she's happy to take a run, which will take us to half Last time. Tackle, Square. And the Broncos with a couple of quick tries to start the game, but the Roosters probably had the better of that latter part in the opening half. At the break, it's Broncos 12, Roosters 4. <laughs> Broncos carrying a lead into the second half here. And the kick return by Vanessa Foliaki, who made a magnificent try saving tackled in the shadows of half time. Don't know how she managed to affect that. Keep going. And through the hands. Already here for the Roosters. She's been good, Amelia Murphy. She played the ball on that occasion. And Lena Duzzi, an aggressive defender, made a strong tackle on. A Togataki. Short pass. Finds Foliaki again. That was off Sahara Tamara. Quincy Dodd, the dummy half. Here's Tamara. 
And out to Yasmin Meeks. Oh, Tomo, she was Look. hit late and hard after she threw that ball, and she's in some trouble as the Roosters go over the sideline, but the referee has called a penalty yeah. here. Yeah. The called yeah, tackle mate. finished. Your time, your time. And that's why he's penalised her, but... She's in a lot of pain there, Zahara Tamara, and hope she's all right. As we see here on the replay, that is a late shot. And she's just been buckled there, but could hopefully oh, it's just some here. winding. It's Annette Brander who made the tackle, and I've got to say, she's been on a bit of a seek and destroy mission since she came into the game off the bench. Experienced player, brings a lot of energy, but a bit late for the assignment there. Let's see if the Roosters can get on the board first in the second half and really make a game of this. Tamara with a flat pass to Cherrington. Inside Brisbane's 20 now. Tamara ball in two hands. Floats a pass on the outside. Yasmin Meeks. 10 short of the Broncos line. Tamara for Cherrington. She runs into Chante Tamara. Who made a good tackle there in combination with Talisha Harden. Dodd, Melanie Howard, dummies. Howard goes all the way and scores. Good footwork. Ah, oh, the Roosters. They're back in this big time. Well, the Roosters were peppering the, the left-hand side defence of the Broncos. They'd go back to the middle, make a little foray, then push back to the side. As we see here on the Harvey Norman replay, just threw a big dummy left foot step, came back against the grain. The middle forwards didn't pick it. And to, oh, Tamika Upton it was that was in that half A position, which is the position right next to the play the ball. She sprinted out to try and cover, thinking that the kick was going to come through. And Mel Howard just spotted that and ducked into the gap. Alana. Ali Brigginshaw was pointing to the Roosters' edge edge back row, edge back, just getting ready for the ball to shift out wide. But I thought what the Roosters did very well that set, as opposed to at times in the first half, was really chance their arm and threw the footy around. They had plenty of Plenty of people running in and around the footy and it just created the opportunity for Howard to back herself. She saw that Ali Brigginshaw was pointing and looking elsewhere. Annette Brander was meant to be there for that inside push and just simply wasn't. Great vision from the half to take the line on there and just react to the way that the defence were defending at the time. Well, the Broncos with the first two tries. The Roosters with a double on the back of that. And this kick from next to the sticks by Tamara can bring us back to... A two-point ball game. Roosters have never beaten the Broncos in the NRLW. Is today the day? <laughs> oh, good kick. the difference. Well, Broncos uh, being challenged here by the Roosters. Good game of footy. Oh, look at that. Lena Duty came flying out of the line. On Sherrington, really solid tackle and a couple of them are into it in back play, actually. Lena Tucci's upset a couple of the roosters. Look it, at that. It was the tackler yeah. and the tackle E just coming through. There's Amelia Murphy bounces. And Shante Tamara off. And she's been so good defensively, Shante, since she came on. But came off second best on that one. Sherrington, oh, that's a lovely little pass. Phillips did well to catch that. It was a good tackle by Brigham Shaw, along with Hard. And oh, we got a Falcon. Then Howard tried to soccer it. The, this is all okay for the moment. Oh, the Roosters are going backwards here. That's a disastrous end to a good set. Now Upton, who has been buzzing around everywhere this afternoon. Doink. 
And she thought the kick was going to be coming from that inside player. And unfortunately, as we see Elena Ducey again with another offload. And Branda powers her way inside the Roosters 20 now. Aiken, she's a live wire, running and stepping, and Rigginshaw fires it to Upton. Oh, they're all class, the Broncos. Aiken, Rigginshaw, Upton. It's a great trio, and Upton with a much-deserved try. She's been brilliant. She has been. Defensively, she's been in the right position. She's been shutting down a lot of what the Roosters have been doing at the back. As we see here on the Harvey Norman replay, Taryn Aiken. Just working her way through the middle, linking up with her other half in Ali Brigginshaw again. Upton pushing through the middle. She floods that space so beautifully. Lena Doozy has been so good coming off the bench. She's been offloading and causing a lot of havoc for the middle Roosters D. Alana, how did you see it down there? Rue, it's absolutely lightning the way that the Broncos are playing. They're getting quick play the balls. And watch Taryn Aiken. She does it in this try, but she does it non-stop. She is running 100 miles an hour at that defensive line, and it makes her a threat every single time she's got the footy in her hands. And then you add in there Ali Brigginshaw supporting and Tamika Upton also on the burst, ready for support play to go over the line. They're dynamite when those three players link up. Well, again, Alana, as Meg Ward lines up to try and make this conversion, Tamika Upton joins the five-try club. Another player this year to score five tries. Fantastic. Might be a couple more left in here yet this afternoon. What a great hit back by the Broncos. She's a star to make her Upton. Finishing off a, a wonderful run by Aiken. And great support play by Brigginshaw. Here's Leonard Ducey. Look out! What a powerful unit. And some skill. Well, her offloads are what causing a lot of drama for the Roosters in the middle. They need to try and shut her down. They need to get their line speed up and keep them in this position because at the moment, <laughs> Broncos forwards are just making some easy metres. But there we see some really good, solid, strong defence from Vanessa Foliarchi. Talisha Harden. And here goes Shantae Tamara, picks up 10 metres. They're tackled strongly by Hanisi, who's gone back out there for the Roosters in jumper number 10. Brigginshaw sends a high kick up. A well taken by Shanice Parker at the back, but the kick chase is good. You've spoken about this. They're just such a well-drilled, well oh. As we see, another error. So the last try came off the back of an error in the set. And now another oh. error from the Roosters. Five metres out from their own try line sees the Broncos in pole position to score another four points. And we've seen all year how dangerous they are. They can attack from anywhere in the field. But in particular, and it looks like they're going to do this when they have a long shift from a scrum on one side of the field, with all their bodies in motion, they just wreak havoc and find space. So Brigginshaw feeds the scrum. He's through McGregor. And here's Aiken. Look at that stepping. Beats the first tackle again. Shanice Parker making the tackle. Samara Lenaduzzi. She's still, still powering to the line. Not a great ball to Brigginshaw, the defence up quickly. That's at Romy Tietzel in 15 NRLW debut this afternoon. But Tamara, and here's Brander. Oh, good defence by the Roosters. 
A three-person tackle. She's driven right back to the 10-metre line. Tamara Brigginshaw goes herself. She's just too good for them all. All good, Drew? Ooh. You can see a lot of passion in there from Ali Brigginshaw. She did some beautiful work on the inside from her forwards. Chelsea Lenarduzzi, I thought, was unlucky for the ref to call up her charge so quickly because she had that leg drive going. day of the week. I think the Roosters have backed off a little bit in defence. Certainly down here from the sideline, their communications dropped off a little bit, so they're going to have to try and search for that energy and really work hard, tough out these next few sets, build a little bit of pressure and get themselves back in the game because they need to score some points. An easy one for Meg Ward. <laughs> and the Broncos starting to really get on top here. You can join Alana Ruan and Danica Mason as well on Nine's NRLW show. It's streaming on Nine now. We have a brand new episode every week during the NRLW 2020 season. There's been a couple of highlights in today's two games that I'm sure you'll feature prominently next week, Ruan. We certainly will. A lot of talking points to come out of today so far, and we've still got 18 minutes and 56 seconds left to come up with some more content. So bring it on, girls. I'm loving what I'm seeing this afternoon. The battle between Green and Sergis mm. from the earlier game. Adding Ivania Polite on that edge as well. Just an Elia Green highlights package oh, would, would be handy she? enough. Norman. Oh. All right, can the Roosters find an answer here? Brisbane right on top now. And Chelsea Lenarduzzi. She's totally dominated the middle since she's come off the bench this afternoon. And then another good run by Talisha Harden. They're five short of the halfway now. Shante Tamara, here's Annette Brander. That's a rooster hand on that. And it's six more tackles. Well, this is a big challenge now for the Roosters. They've given away a couple of penalties in easy position, and now they've given away another six tackles. They can't let their heads drop. They need to really work up their defence, get in the face of the Broncos and don't sit on their heels. Aiken Robinson. Good tackle made that time by Meeks. As they go right. And Branda nearly through the line here. The Broncos poised to strike once more. Aiken Robinson. Ah, ball comes free and a good tackle there by Yasmin Meeks. There's a good sportsmanship shown there too. Yasmin Meeks got uh, caught her opposite number in a bit of an awkward tackle and as soon as the whistle went from the referee, she just went to check on her, make sure she was okay. But it was a wonderful, wonderful ball and all tackle and forced the error there. And now the Roosters will get the ball back, see if they can start creating some opportunities for themselves and not succumb to the pressure of the scoreboard at the moment. 14 points. There's still plenty of time for them to score tries. Shot clock off. Right, A reminder, tomorrow. tomorrow afternoon, Suncorp Super Netball Grand Final. The Melbourne Vixens taking on the West Coast Fever. Our live coverage from 1pm right here on 9. It'll be a great conclusion to another great season of Suncorp Super Netball. They read that nicely. Tackle made by Robinson on Parker. Oh, no one was looking. Ball's gone over their heads. The 
And now Grace Hamilton is back out there after starting the game in jumper 21. She runs up to her own 40. Howard under pressure. And Upton takes it on her chest. And she's tackled just over a 30. Well, in that previous set of six from the Roosters, a little a stat popped up on the screen where it showed metres gained. Roosters 600, Broncos 828. That just shows you the dominance of this forward pack for the Broncos. They have been fantastic. Brigham Shaw kicks on the third tackle. Robinson's after it. The bounce sits up okay though. And Shanice Parker can defuse any threat down there. Here's Meeks now. Wearing 11, playing in the centres. Tackled by Leonard Duzzi. Back in the centre of ANZ Stadium. Anita Maynard has gone back out there. Here's Simon. Howard there, that's well done. Corbin McGregor down the left touchline. Howard's there in support. The ball finds her. Brigginshaw clings on. They need some more support coming here. Uh, Howard has got the ball back now. She's looking to go to the right-hand side. Long floating pass through the hands. There's a chance in the corner. Might be the try of the season. Oh, pass. Oh, he's called oh, a forward he's called pass, Tomo. What are you Alan? doing, ref? You can't challenge. You can't challenge a forward pass. That was all right. Give him We're a try. Brisbane. That was the try of the year. If that was given. Look at this. A beautiful break down the left hand side. Corbin McGregor comes up with a wonderful pass over defence to Mel Howard. And here, the interchange of passing we see. Phillips, Howard. Howard spots a bit of gap. Sees that the Broncos are compressed through the middle. Salah Tongatuki onto her second row partner. Which one? Oh, is he calling oh, the Talina Turn it up. Oh, wow. Now go on the field and take the whistle off him, will you? <laughs> you what I am very close I'm blowing up down here that was brilliant footy from the Roosters and just from so many different women the support right, play it. Corbin Let's McGregor Chelsea, to start that whole attacking set up backs herself absolutely gassed Ali Brigginshaw and then the perfect pass back inside they have every right to be filthy about that because there was no chance any of those passes went forward well, that was something from the Roosters now Brigginshaw Takes a hit up herself. I'm glad Gus is in here. He doesn't think refs should have whistles at all. But he's Millie Boyle. Well, we need refs, but I think that one I would have given it. Mm. Yeah, strong defence there. For the Mina Hanisi, the 10 for the Roosters, with a push and shove in the play the ball too. Ray McGregor bangs a kick over the top. She wants the touchline. That's smart play. Very smart. Exactly. Took the words out of my mouth, Tomo. She saw that this game was starting to get a little bit of spice. The Broncos forwards were starting to get drawn into a little bit of push and shove with the Roosters forwards. And she thought, I'll just take the time off them. I'll just put it over the touchline. We'll have a scrum. We'll let the blood and the jets cool a little bit. And uh, then we'll just get up on them in defence. Saw so, uh, Chelsea Lenarducci coming to the Broncos bench to have a rest just a moment ago. She got a round of high fives for her efforts. Need her, here we go. Shot clock off. Strong front row, isn't it? It's, just wait, just wait. it's a really good pack. Yeah, and she's one of their starting front rowers. And just to change things up, they brought her off the bench to provide a bit more punch. As we see again, McGregor finds some joy down that left edge. Oh, look out. The touch line's nearly there. No, she stops just inside of it. Nita Maynard, oh, ball slipped out of her hands. Lucky it went backwards, she'd be filthy at herself if she knocked that on. Played by Hanisi. Toga Tuki. Now Maynard, quick from dummy half, but they nab her before she could get wound up. Shantae Tamara oh, and her sister Zahara with a kick over the top which bounces away from Upton. 
Eventually gets it back, but the kick is Ahara Tamara down there to help make the tackle with Melanie Howard. Well, grand final next week, same two teams. And sort of wondering, Ruan, how the Roosters go about stopping all these attacking threats for Brisbane. Briganshaw and, and Aiken, they've got McGregor. Well, they've, and not, that's without even mentioning their forward pack. Their yeah. forward pack really set a great platform for all of those players you just mentioned to run off the back of it, created a lot of space. Talisha Harden has been busy yeah. again as she takes the ball up this afternoon. But the Roosters have had some really good points themselves. I think that they we just need to see whether that no try will galvanise them or make them drop their heads. The two Parkers combining there at the back, but it's a very good kick chase. Now, who's this down in back play? It looks like uh, Sarah Tongatuki down in back play with, with the trainer. All the way, Tola, Felicia. We'll see. Yeah, it is. See what the, uh, the trainer comes back with. Meeks played the ball. Tamara. Inside pass finds Foliaki. Robinson helping out with the tackle. And Aiken there as well. Maynard for Tamara. That was a nice little ball on the outside. Parker with a left foot. Kick straight to Upton. Great hands. She caught it with hands and knees. Mm. That's talent. Hold. Unnecessary contact. Oh, pressure on the neck. Okay, so he's called Nita Maynard for that. It hasn't gone on report though, so hopefully for her sake, she'll be all right and clear to play in the grand final next week. And Tamika Upton has come, got to her feet as well. That's a really good sign. This might be a bit off topic, but I'm just looking at the Eastern Grandstand here, Ruan, and you always get an idea of what sort of an atmosphere you're in for when the absolute top tier has got people in it. And I'm, the nosebleeds are filling up up there. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a fair few seats, but I can see a lot of South Sydney jumpers up the top. So well, they're, your, uh, they're your real rugby league diehards. They'll take any seat that's available. So I reckon this place will be going off Absolutely. a bit later tonight. Oh, play on. Heitzel put down on the 20 metre line. And a good strong charge that one. And Shannon Marto. 11 out now. Can the Broncos find another try? McGregor to McGregor. They're on the wrong team though. Corbin McGregor racing away. Aiken chasing. Corbin might have a bit too much speed. She does. She goes 100 metres and scores. Oh. What an intercept. She read that absolutely beautifully on her own five metre line. She knew she had to have a play at this ball. We're going to watch this in even better definition on the Harvey Norman replay. Corbin McGregor finds, <laughs> finds the pass from Racine McGregor, sprints away. I thought Taryn Aiken might have had the legs to catch her, but Corbin McGregor, who is also a sprint coach in her own right, just had too much speed, got away for that four-pointer, and that is, that's a great captain's try, that one. Really turning the tide for your team. Against the grain, that's beautiful. She's such a good mover, Corbin McGregor. Alana. I've loved watching the development of Corbin McGregor's game, even during this series. Beautiful Shaq is there too. Just seeing how versatile she is as a player. She's spent a little bit of time in 5'8 and out in the centres, but just her read on the game's brilliant. She puts a lot of time and effort and training into those fundamentals. You mentioned, Rue, that sprint training, it's paying off. She was absolutely lightning. Taryn Aiken, mind you, has a lot of pace. She, she nearly got there. If there might have been 20 extra metres on the field, she could have had her for pace. But excellent read here from Corbin McGregor. What an incredible athlete. I love watching her play footy and she is well deserved this try today. We also just saw Ali Brigginshaw left the field, so she's obviously having a little bit of a breather. She came off with about 10 minutes to go, preparing for next week. And Shante Tamara came on to replace her. There you can see Ali Brigginshaw on the field, still talking. I don't think that'll stop her being on the sideline, mind you. Well, there's still six and a half minutes left here. This isn't the big prize, of course, that both teams through next week, but this kick 
from Zahara Tamara keeps the game alive. It's a good kick. Well done. Eight points of difference. And just over six and a half left. Panthers, Rabbitohs later, as I said, placing the grand final at stake. It's a bit lighter here at ANZ than it was a little while ago. And we're expecting it to be dry. And let's hope it is, because these two teams can let it sing, can't they? We're here uh, live from 7 p.m. And kick off just a bit before 8. So it's going to be uh, another riveting night of rugby league. Live and free here on Nines Wobble to Sports. Well, Tomo, Tamika Apton has just come from the field. She looks like she's getting a, a well deserved rest as well. And you touched on earlier, there's four Broncos <laughs> players side, that share Julia. a house. <laughs> Millie Boyle opened her home to three other players, being Tamika Upton, Romy Teitzel, and Lauren Brown. They're all living in a two bedroom apartment together. Oh, I didn't know yeah, it was a two bedroom apartment. And apart. apparently, they uh, all, all cook quite well. They're all very tidy. They clean up after themselves. So there's no discontent in the household so far. And when you're playing good footy, that also helps too. No discontent yet. We'll have a season in soon. There's well, an excellent run. Now, I've got a bit of a run on here. Grace Hamilton over the halfway. Maynard Howard, what a ball. Parker, she's nearly through the gap. What a good tackle that was. Lauren Brown. Howard, where's Maynard going to go? Back on the inside. Oh, no, the ball's been lost by Hanisi. Oh, she went for the offload, and she really didn't need to at that point. They had the Broncos on the ropes, unfortunately, just relieved all of that pressure that they built up there. And now the Broncos pushing up through the middle, looking strong. Chelsea Lenaduce back out there for a, for a final stint the last five and a half minutes. There's Millie. And now Chelsea Lenaduce. Nice little offload there too to McGregor, who gets wrestled to ground. Tamara for Aiken. And Teitzel, she got a nice offload away as well. Robinson runs onto the ball. She's over the 30 metre line. And Teitzel again, she's had a good first game in the NRLW coming off the bench this afternoon. Quick play the ball. Tamara for McGregor. Puts a kick up towards Simon's wing. I think that's tapped back by Brisbane. This should be a try. It's Meg Ward in the corner. Tommy, tackle six. We have a try. Can we ensure there's onside? Then a knockback Brisbane into grounding. There's a few things to check here from the referee, but there was some heavy contact between Meg Ward Broncos and Tamina Simon. Broncos kick chaser Simon. onside. No. It looks like it touched Meg Ward's hand and then into the shoulder of Talina Simon, which is a shame because Meg deserved that four-pointer. Well, no, it touches the face of Talina Simon. Ball is initially touched by the Roosters in the contest. Mm. I think it's come off to Lena Simon, into Meg Ward, back Then the ball comes Lena off Simon. the right hand of Meg Ward as a knock-on by the Broncos. We have a decision. No try. And that's a shame. Meg deserved a second try. She's been really strong on that right wing and her kicking, again, as Alana touched on at halftime, has been exemplary. Okay. It's a double knock on. Brisbane feed. 
Time on. First knock on against the Roosters. Yep. So, Bronco ball coming up. On the 20. It's a Brisbane thing. Roosters. It's a Brisbane thing. Bobby Brigginshaw. Another premiership at her mercy next week. She's done it all, hasn't she? Brilliant to watch. He's Aiken. He's going brilliant today. And Robinson. Oh, look at this. Look at the conveyor belt here. Driven back about 13 metres in a strong tackle. That's the worst feeling, Tomo. I could imagine. It's yeah. the worst. It's like the levitating, oh. but in a direction you don't want to be going in. You're fast in the wrong way. <laughs> Go on, Zahara. Boyle plays it on the 10. Aiken with an inside pass. That's Lauren Brown. Oh, another one dragged back. Hamilton, the main contributor to that tackle. Boyle again, ran at Maynard, who took the legs away. Got about three plays of the balls on the exact same blade of grass. McGregor. Two metres out from the line. Floating pass, finds Aiken, kicks to the end goal. The ball, oh, it's a fraction too deep. It looked like it was about to sit up. In the end, it took a, a cruel bounce for the Broncos and well over the back. So with time running out, just under three minutes to go. The Roosters with a 20-meter restart. Alana, comment from you, sideline. I've just been really impressed by the way that these two teams have handled this second half. I think the game would be completely different if that disallowed try was allowed. The score, the score line would be much closer, and I've just been impressed watching the professionalism of both sides and how they've handled it. Working the edges, strong through the middle, even though that fatigue has kept through. I think it's been a great standard Good of work. footy and it just makes next week so exciting because we know that these women can take it to another level. And that is just exciting. I cannot wait to see that happen. Yeah, you're right about that. No try. I mean, the, the game looks totally different if, if they're awarded that. Yep. You saw that the, the, the burst of energy the Roosters got when they, they scored their most recent try. So if you had another one to that, score lines are much closer together, obviously. The kick rolls over the sideline. Less than two minutes left. Just the, on that basis too, Rowan, the Roosters have probably think themselves a chance of turning this around for next week. I think they will. Also, they've got a number of key personnel to come back into the side for the grand final next week, as does the Broncos. They'll shift back to their normal positioning. But I think they'll also, both teams have felt each other out. They know what their strengths are. They know what their weaknesses are. They've tested a few opportunities this afternoon and they've come up with tries or they've come up short. So I think they'll know going into next week how they'll play the game. And it, it does make for an exciting clash next weekend, that's for sure. Oh, Boyle tackled strongly by Togatuki. Here's uh, Chelsea Lenarducci. She's, she's an absolute beast in traffic. She's strong and she's got skill as well. What a player. Also, a great work there by Bridie Parker. Read that that ball was going to go out wide, shut it down, got a turnover for her team. And now the Roosters on the bush, 50 metres out. Can they come up with another try in the last 45 seconds? Togatuki will play the ball here to Maynard. Then Harnisi, tackled by Linadusi. Tamara working across the ground. Pass doesn't go to hand. And uh, I don't think either team is particularly keen to Running reset the Racing. a scrum and, and finish the game off. I think they're happy with what they've done so uh, far. I think you're right there, Tomo. They all look like they're just milling about a little mm. bit, just waiting for the last five seconds to count down. And Broncos, again, maintain their winning streak against the Roosters. Real bogey team for the Roosters. They've never beaten the Broncos. So I wonder if grand final next week, could that be the week for them to win? Full time here, NRLW Broncos 24 over the Roosters 16.